Yeah, about a half hour. of the University of Nevada, Reno. Some 60 candidates for public office from both major parties in attendance. Participants in the forum, student leaders, and others, and a This land and come to think of about this clear blue sky and this thing that if Columbus had taken that boat ride across the Pacific and all these good people here except Governor List why that word old-fashioned I have a suspicion that's because I'm here <laughs> I'd like to make this a pep rally for the wolf packs victory tomorrow hey. you know I have to tell you, I love outdoor rallies like this. Once during the campaign, some fellas under a sun lamp getting a tan. And finally, there in sunny California, indoors, a friend said to him one day, of all our people.
even though the Americans don't want the amendment, even though the majority of the Congress voted for the amendment, the House Democrats, but I have some questions for those of you all over our television screen, the land based in this administration, to tell us. Where were they? Then tax and tax and that has been on the and in the Let me ask the Lord their prime lending rate to 13%. Some supreme optimist felt that one day he would province in any respect. I can tell you, Mr. President, I don't see any hecklers of the type that you were confronted with yet. So. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our friend, the President of the United States. Thank you. But it is right that we are on a tight schedule because all of us are due uh, down in Las Vegas to do much of the, not what you usually go there for, but to do some of the same thing we've been doing here. But as you know, I just came over from the university and I understand that uh, uh, you've been watching that. I, I wasn't there to enroll. I'm holding out for a football scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but you've got a Comstock load of good candidates this year. Governor List and Barbara Bukanovich are two of those good candidates, and I'm delighted to be here today and to show my support for them. With political leaders like Governor and Barbara, we can change the direction of this country. We can replace the failed policies that I was talking about over there. I'm not going to make a long speech. You've had to hear one of those already. <laughs> but you know, one thing that I didn't talk about there that I want to mention here is that you know, the high unemployment rate is an inherited disease and it's been worsening for a long, long time. And the big spenders that I was talking about uh, are the same people who brought us high taxes and inflation and so forth. They're the carriers of this disease. 
And I believe the American people are going to turn a good number of them out this fall. And I pointed out that the economic problems are the result of a couple of decades of their fine-tuning economically. Now, they're trying to hang the 9.8% unemployment rate, or whatever it will be tomorrow, and everyone is expecting that it will probably go up some more. And they're trying to hang it on us. Well, I'm willing to be fair. Unemployment is now 9.8%. It was 7.4% when we took office. And I'll take responsibility for the 2.4 if they'll take responsibility for the 7. <laughs> if it should go up to 10 tomorrow, well, then I'll take responsibility for 2.6. But I think if we can really communicate, and that calls for all of us and all of you here, if we can keep reminding people of the things that we have done, those interest rates, the 25% tax cut, which they're still trying to take away from us. They're still aiming at that 10% in July, but it'll be over a couple of dead bodies that I know, his and mine. <laughs> and uh, we're cutting the growth in, in regulations, as I also said in the speech, and I think that the people will stick with us if, if they can see that ray of hope and realize that what we're doing is the way to get at that desperate problem of unemployment because it's caused by the thing we're most successful at controlling, and that is inflation. How does that come about? Well, with inflation, the interest rates have to go up to keep pace with it. The fellow that lends the money has got to get back enough dollars in addition to his interest to make up for the loss of value in those dollars. In the decade of the 70s in which they were in charge, that dollar of 1970 was only worth 47 cents by 1980. Now, what this means to people with insurance policies, with people with savings and so forth, but that's why the interest rates had to go where they are. Well, when the interest rates went up, people couldn't buy automobiles because of the high interest rate, couldn't get, get take mortgages on homes for the same reason. Those two industries alone can cause a recession of the size that we have right now because these fans out, appliances, that don't get made and don't get sold when homes aren't built. Glass, rubber, steel, all of them followed down the line when the automobile market dried up. So I know that we have to get out of here and get in that airplane, but I'm not going to go on making a speech, but if, if I said that just once, if somebody has uh, been thinking sometime, if I had a chance, I'd like to ask him, well, for at least one, and I know they're going to take us out of here. If somebody has a question, fire away. And I'm, and I'm like, you hit that guy in the nose yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. I, I have to tell you, I just told the head of our security unit here, I saw them kind of put him under surveillance and watch him very closely, and I said, you were watching the wrong guy if you were expecting violence. <laughs> well, now and then, uh, now and then you have more fun than you do at other times. <laughs> but I want to tell you something, clear something up, though. They, I referred to two of them because of that fellow that got up on the other side of the room and clapped. I thought he was clapping for that fellow. <laughs> you know, the man was crying afterward. Happens to be a staff member of Congressman Guy Vanderjack, and he had stood up, hoping that if he did this, everyone would stand up and start applauding and drown that fellow out. And none of us knew that until it was all over. And even Guy was telling the press on the way, he was, when he heard it was one of his staff members, he was going to go to fire him or something. But it, it turned out just fine. Now everybody knows that my book, he's a hero. <laughs> I'm even glad he failed because he would have shut both of us up if he was succeeded. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Hey, yes, a governor's got to have a lieutenant governor. Bill, that's you. Listen, I want to, on behalf of all the battery Republicans, just thank you from the bottom of my heart for being. Well, Well, 
really, and I know Paul's told you this a million times, it's wonderful every once in a while to get out of Washington and back into the real world. <laughs> What does it mean? 